Now you have to decide how you want to actually have that mesh follow the joints. In this case, since my character is one consistent mesh, except for perhaps his belt, for the majority of them, I would usually do a smooth bind. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Smooth bind, pretty simple. You have your mesh, you have your joint structure. If you've built your joint structure as one consistent joint structure so that all the joints are parented into the hierarchy, meaning that they, if I select, let's say, one this one joint, it highlights the entire structure, that means I selected one joint, but it's in control of all of the joints, which is why they all highlight. I suppose if I selected the clavicle, notice only the joints that come after it highlight because this clavicle is, in, is essentially the root of the chains that branch off of the, clav the central clavicle joint there. So in this case, I'm selecting the root of the entire joint structure. I'm going to shift select the entire mesh. So now if I want to do a smooth bind, I go to Skin, Bind Skin, Smooth Bind, and then go to the Option box. I'm going to the Option box so I can adjust how Maya is actually going to make the connection between the mesh and the joints. By default, <coughs> Maya has several settings in place that may or may not be helpful. Um, by default, the Bind 2 option is set for joint hierarchy, which in this case is what we want because our root joint is in control of the entire joint structure and we have a full mesh, not just part of one. So we want it, we want our mesh to bind not just to the root joint but to every joint in the hierarchy. So joint hierarchy we won't use. If I was just binding to a specific joint, like let's say the hip, since I just made a selection on just the hip, you'll see it says just hip. Uh, when you, usually when you make a multiple selection, you'll get a, sort of the last thing that was selected and a lot of dots after it, just indicating that uh, multiple things have been selected. So if I was just going to do selected joints for the binding, I'd select that joint, shift select, or several joints, and shift select the mesh, and then I'd select choose selected joints as my bind to option but in this case I'm just going to do joint hierarchy there is also object hierarchy but I haven't really used that too much I think that's mostly for uh, influence objects <coughs> so for joints we're just going to stick with either joint hierarchy or selected joints select remember selected joints if you're doing one or two joints here or there or just a small cluster if you're doing the entire joint structure, you want joint hierarchy. Uh, the bind method, closest in hierarchy. Uh, that's essentially whichever verte vertices or vertex are close to, let's say this joint here, those are the ones that we bound to. Uh, closest in distance is pretty much the same thing. It's like whatever's closest distance. I usually choose closest in distance just so that hopefully if everything works out there's not really a big problem with uh, deformation. Then we have skin method. So classic linear is usually good. Uh, don't know too much about the other two but I do find that choosing weight blended I uh, usually get a much better result when it comes to the deformation. Uh, weight blended, I think, actually helps with uh, the joints actually sharing control of an area. I think it just does it in sort of a smoother way, so the deformations are just by default a lot cleaner than if I just used linear. Uh, normalized weights. Normalized weights, basically, this is an option that tells Maya what to do while you're painting weights. It tells it whether to adapt or not to adapt. Uh, none, pretty much, it does nothing. So I usually don't do that one. I want Maya to do a little something. By default, it's set for post. Uh, that can be problematic because that usually means that you have to paint weights twice. Meaning that once the binding's done and you're painting weights to control the way something deforms, if you've bound using post, 
then that means you have to not only paint weights to a joint, but you also have to select the joints that you don't want to have control of it and remove that weight. So essentially you're painting weights twice. I prefer interactive because this allows Maya to automatically remove the influences that I don't want on something. It automatically removes that influence when I'm adding control to a joint that I want to have the influence. So below that we get to uh, allow multiple bind poses. That's usually fine to leave on. That just means you can bind uh, different joint structures into the mesh uh, later on if you wish. Then there's, uh, main t there's max influences and maintain max influences. So the max influences is where you actually determine how many joint uh, how many joints have influence over a single vertex within an area. Um, so if you tell it to maintain max influences and you have it set for a really high number, this can be a major problem. For example, if we have this one joint here, and then we have all these verts around this area. Now, if it's told max influences is five, this means that five joints have to influence the verts in this area. So even though I may only want this joint to be the primary influence in this area, Maya will automatically, because of that setting, assign the, five, the four other nearest, nearest joints as influences, and so it'll create a huge problem. So I find it's best to drop your max influences down to, in some cases, one, and other, uh, usually though I set it for two, and disable max influences. Because usually two is a good place to start. Um, some people prefer one, but never five is just kind of ridiculous. Um, and then, and that's, and that's. I mean, maybe it'll come in handy if you had a large cluster of joints uh, in an area, but not usually. Usually doesn't happen. So max influences. Uh, drop the two. Maintain max influences. And disable that all together. Okay, so then uh, we have our drop-off rate, which is basically just the the amount of the amount of influence that drops off as you get away from the a joint. So at the center where the joint is, it will be 100%, and then maybe a few percent out, it'll be 80%, and then a little further out, it'll be 60. And then basically, this is the drop-off rate that controls that. So once you have your base settings in place, these are my preferred settings. Select the root of your skeletal structure, select your mesh, and just tell it to bind skin. So, if you've done it properly, the mesh should highlight magenta like this. And when, that's when you select the joint structure. See that? It's highlighting. Okay, and when you select, you select your mesh, and if you look at your channels box, you'll see under inputs it says skin cluster 1. Uh, and all of the attributes of the mesh will be locked because uh, the top level transform of the mesh does not move. It's the shape inside of it that does. So it locks that off by default because you're no longer going to be keyframing. You're not going to keyframe the mesh or anything like that. You're going to be keyframing basically the joints to deform the mesh. So if I select my joints, and I'll just do a little rotation. Let me turn off a uh, discrete rotation there. Now you see it's actually moving the mesh and the waist is deforming. It's not great. You see there's a weird distortion there. Well, that's something you have to go through and paint weights with. But just from a default bind, that's actually not bad. And let's check his arm. Same thing here. See, so you can already see a few areas where the edge loops are deforming oddly. And that just means that we need to go in and paint weights in those areas. But in general, we have a pretty good bind here. And so that's pretty much the basics of smooth bind.